Hello everybody, this is your man James Jackson. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today is a big day, I know for. I am finally doing my part two of how to set up HDR content. And this time we're looking at post-production workflow and how to get your post-production workflow set up. I know you guys have been asking about this for a long time, you know, but I just wanted to make sure you got the proper information um, so that I wasn't leading you if any misdirections or anything like that. Um, and also I needed to make sure I had the right setup to basically give you the information needed. I finally do. I finally got everything set up and I'm finally delivering the video. So here we go. I'll try to keep this as short as possible. First of all, if you haven't seen my, um, video on how to properly set up HDR content on the production side, make sure to check that video out. I will definitely leave a link to that video in the description below. Uh, so definitely check that out before you come to this one. Once you see that one and you got that set up and you're straight, uh, come back here and we'll uh, go in to the post-production side. So let's go into it. Um, so before we go into the editing, a few things. Uh, things that you will need to set up to make sure you are delivering HDR. First things first, just like in the production side, you will need a monitor or some sort of device that is able to display in HDR content. Um, so today we are going to be using the Atomos Ninja. I have it linked up to my computer. Uh, so one, I don't have to worry about recording and draining and burning too much of the, the pressure on the computer. It goes right to the comp it goes right to the Atomos and it's easier for me to run it that way. You will need an HDR monitor to set up uh, the editing process. And next is the editing program you choose. Now today we are going to look at it through DaVinci Resolve as DaVinci Resolve has, in my opinion, the smoothest transition of de delivering HDR content to the web. Um, the others, um, I, haven't, I haven't actually had a chance to work with Final Cut. Um, it's not the program I typically use and Premiere, you can do it. It's just, it's a weird way. And I'd rather get to that in another video, but this is a way you can do it. Now we're going to be looking at HLG footage from the GH5S. Um, another thing to keep in mind, if you are planning to, uh, deliver HDR content, you have to have the full version of DaVinci Resolve. It will not work if you have the, the free studio version, you have to have the full version. Um, if you haven't got the ver full version, it, it's $300 to get it, um, which is a lot less than what it used to be, which was like $1,000. But that's the price um, to, uh, to make sure you can deliver. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. All right, here we go. So first things first is to make sure you got everything set up. It's already been set up here. These are set of clips is I took of a birthday celebration um, so of a birthday celebration so the first thing you need to do is uh, import all your footages now keep in mind um, when you import if you're not familiar with DaVinci once you import the files you have to make sure you set the frame rate of the timeline because once you, because once you import them in, you can't change it. You can change other things, but you cannot change the frame rates of the timeline. It is what it is. Otherwise, you have to start over. Just keep that in mind. All right. So, when we get to the timeline section, um, really what you need to go to is the project settings. And then when you go to the project settings, this is, like I said, you need to make sure that your timeline frame rates. Now you can change the playback frame rate and the video formats, but the timeline frame rate has to be set before you can import them. Or if you do set them that way and they ask you to change, make sure that's what you want. So that's for, that's for that. We're gonna go to, yeah, just to end the master settings you want to make sure you enable HDR metadata over the HDMI so it goes directly to the Atomos uh, Inferno or whatever your HDR monitor is. Just make sure that is checked right there. 
Um, and now you're going to go to color management. So the, ba the um, standard setup would be DaVinci YRGB. You want to change that to DaVinci YRGB color management because now your, uh, your option is going to open up for your input, your timeline, and your output. So for this, the, you, can, you can leave the input color as it is, as Rec. 709. What really matters is the timeline color and the output color. In terms of HLG, you want to make sure it's set to Rec. 2020 HLG Arab SDD standard B67 for both the timeline and the output color. So make sure you have that. Mas make sure you have HDR mastering and then set the nits. I like to have it at 10,000 nits. It's just, I, I like the, and then everything else you can pretty much uh, keep. So once all that is set, you just hit save. Now once it's saved, you just start your editing and then we get into the color grading. So this is where the monitor comes in. So unless your, unless your laptop is HDR, um, it will not recognize, it will not show up the colors properly, which is why it is imperative that, that you have the monitor. So let's say you've done all that, you've done your grading, you've uh, got everything set up, you've already said this, you've got your grading, everything's set, and now you're ready to deliver. So this is the final part of delivering the content. Now this is different depending on the uh, p uh, computer you're working on, whether if you're a PC or if you're a Mac. Now, if you are a Mac user, you are going to want to use, uh, it's going to offer you ProRes. It's going to give you a option for ProRes. Um, and you want to get the highest ProRes, so which was, I believe is ProRes HQ444. That's the uh, codec you want to deliver in. In terms of PC, you want to make sure you are set to DNX HR 444, uh, 10-bit or 12-bit, it doesn't really matter, but DNX HR 444 is what you want. Uh, I just set it, keep it at 12-bit. Like I said, make sure you set it to DNX HR. If you're on the PC, make sure you set it to DNX HR um, 444. Otherwise, it won't trigger uh, the H the HDR content on YouTube. So we so let's set this out. So let's add to render queue and start rendering. So right now it's uploading to YouTube. Uh, just keep in mind these are large files, so it may take a little longer than normal. Um, also, um, I, me personally, I would always make sure to set your content to private unless until you're absolutely certain that you see that it is triggering on, um, that YouTube is triggering the HDR. Now you're probably wondering, well, how in the world am I gonna know if YouTube is going to trigger this or not? Well, if you have any of the newer mobile phones, the LG V30, like I have right here, or the Samsung 8, or the Samsung 9, or the iPhone 10, they all have the capabilities of viewing HDR through YouTube. Uh, so you can easily just put, turn on your phone once the upload, you've properly uploaded it. Um, just put it on your phone and then just see. But I would just say set it to private until you can confirm that it is. But yeah, it's, it's pretty much simple like that. And as long as you follow those steps, um, delivering HDR is really easy. It's just, you know, I think it's just more of being able to manage monitoring on an HDR. Once you have an HDR monitor and you understand the steps to go through, it's pretty much you know easy to deliver HDR content. If you like this video, leave a like and also let me know what you thought. I want to hear you guys out. Leave a comment below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell button so you can get notifications of all the new content coming. Um, I've got more and more stuff coming on. Um, so Stay tuned. Until next time, take care.